Welcome back to Some Offense Intended. I am Jeremy Robinson. I am Mike Mick. And so I got the trucks delivered, thankfully, finally, yes. on Thursday. And they are big. That's, yeah, they are. Uh, so the, the 550 is a 14-foot flatbed. It's, so <laughs> it's it's very large. Well, I thought about that when I was thinking that would be great I could, if I could take that to work, like put something comfortable in the back, and then when I'm bored working, I can just go out and take a nap. Yeah. yeah. You can do that with a U-Haul and just... People that turn them into tiny homes. There's yeah. a guy that parks at the park down the street that does that. Oh, well, I just meant just, you know, take a nap. I don't want to live in it. <laughs> <laughs> you could have your shoes with you all the time. I could just change them just as, on a whim. Yeah. Somebody asked me one day about how many, you know, about how many shoes I have. And I, but you can only wear so many at a time. And I'm like, yeah, but if I leave my apartment four times, there's a chance I'm wearing four different pairs of shoes. <laughs> only you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. No, so I've, I've been working on them a little bit here and there. Like, yeah. I got, I think the main issue with the 550 fix, because whoever looked at it or tried to work on it before was really dumb. They put, a, they put a part in backwards that's supposed to let oil flow through. And <laughs> when it's backwards, it doesn't let oil flow through. And because it's a power stroke, everything functions off of oil pressure. Yeah. So. Well, their, their loss is your gain. No, oh, exactly. So that's, you got to hope more stupid people work on cars and trucks. You can yeah, so benefit. Tomorrow, tomorrow I got to go to uh, the Ford dealership and see if they have any of these parts that I need, so I don't have to wait fucking two days every time I order something. Yeah. Um, but it was great. So I I buttoned up because I took a couple parts off today before we got here, mm-hmm. and this old couple that lives up the street, and like the the semi custom custom homes. Yeah. And they were walking their dog and walking past, and they're like, "Hi!" I'm like, "Hey, how you doing?" And like. I don't know if they thought I was out of earshot. And she's like, this is a street, not a parking lot. Oh. Yeah. So one, one um. says the lady with probably an acre or two. Uh, it's a city street yeah, that people. you can fucking park on. And yeah, people park in the street all the time. All the time. Like look down the street at the fucking park. Cause they're, they're yeah. doing baseball, they're, softball, t-ball, whatever the fuck now. I was going to mention that they're There's not like being very safe. 50 either. or 100 fucking cars down there. There's so many kids like yeah. on the baseball field at the same time. Some of them don't look like they're part of the, the practice because they're all bundled up and they're talking to each other, not even paying attention. They're all bundled up. It's like, fucking 80 outside. There was, there was a kid over there just with a jacket. Also, I mean, like like it was winter. Like like there was snow coming well, I mean, down. It was two days ago. But <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that's just, you know, even, even a kid playing t-ball, they hit the ball. You know, accidentally, yeah, they they could actually hit a line drive, and that'll hurt that kid. I mean, he's he's got a he's got padding on the jacket. Yeah, he's fine. But the the the, I don't think the beanie's not going to help. I don't think T balls gonna, they're going to hit a line drive. I I did a, a line drive to mid like. No, they were just past first base. Oh, okay, I was going to say like halfway to second. Like, that's what I'm saying. They were on the, the pl- there was a whole bunch of kids on the plane. I mean, maybe Turpins. they're just letting them fuck around. I don't know. It just looked weird. So, again, with parking. There's so many kids down there. One of my trucks that's out back, the green truck. Yeah. It's just, it's been parked there for almost two years. Yeah. I just got, uh, my landlord texted me and said, hey, can you move this? The city said it's not parked on a, an approved parking surface because it's parked on dirt. Okay. So, after two years, they care. So, I think well, somebody, I think it might be that lady. Somebody up there is tired of looking at it, so I'm going to move it onto the pad back there. But, um, but no, it's 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 not it's not parked. It's 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 on dirt, so it's it's planted. You're waiting for it to grow. I mean, yeah, I could argue that, or like my brother <laughs> did, because um, in Henderson it's very similar, like city codes often, mm-hmm. and he got a notice saying, "Hey, you can't park that on the dirt." So he went and got paver stones, like twenty of them. Mm-hmm jacked up the truck and put four under each tire nice now, now it's not on dirt good. yep perfect so i have room i'll move it but yeah. i did ask the landlord i'm like do you know if they're okay with pavers <laughs> <laughs> she's like i don't know here's the number for the city you can call them mm-hmm. i'm not gonna call the city yeah the least interaction i can have with them the better yeah i agree with that. Be- especially because of how much i work on stuff yeah you don't want to draw their attention no. to other things. So, oh, yeah, we'll come out and look. Oh, well, what's this? Oh, well, what's this? Yeah. Shut up. Look, go away. Go ahead. Leave me alone. I'll move the truck. Just go away. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to do that tomorrow. Do super, like, when when the trucks got dropped off, I've done sketchy stuff before towing cars. Yeah. This is the most sketched out I've ever felt in my life. Wow. So I'm sitting in the F550 on the, on the trailer. All right. And because the trailer has, like, the, it's a very large trailer. Yeah, it has to be because that's a yeah. pretty big truck. So... It's all the way up at the front of the on the trailer, and there's a little hump that it has to get over to go to the back. Mm-hmm. And the guys that delivered it are like, we can't push it over the hump, so they're like, sit in the truck with it in a neutral, and your foot on the brake, let off the brake when I go forward, and then I'm going to back up and like do the, the scooch out from under it thing. That's called science. Yeah. And... The first two times, like he didn't, he wasn't gunning it fast enough. So, like, it wasn't really doing what he wanted. And he got really close to hitting the very front of the trailer. And then several times they worked and, like, went pretty far back on the trailer. And I'm like, I, I don't know how much is left because the mirrors aren't angled right and I can't yeah. see the trailer. I'm like, I, I, I think that might be good. And he's like, nah, one more. I, I think that's good. I'm like, that's okay. I don't know. That's, it worked. Yeah. But it definitely was sketchy as shit. But it's definitely some stuff I would do. So sometimes you have to improvise. Yeah. Like putting an engine in the back of a golf. Oh yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think it was two or three engines by the time it was at least two. Yeah. I think I might have done a third by the time I got rid of the golf. Yeah. I'm not so. surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's Nothing new in, in my world. People being upset that I work on cars and trucks and have cars and trucks. Yeah. So. Yeah, one day she might need something worked on. She could ask you. No. And I not won't. be mean. You know, she yeah. could have been smart and been on your good side. That's I, I don't know if she was referring to the park with how many people are parked there. Yeah. Or if well, there's a lot down trucks. there today. No, yeah. So yeah. I don't benefit the doubt. There is a parking lot over there because it's neg- it's connected to a school, so they yeah. could literally park in a parking lot. Yeah. So I don't know if that's what she's talking about. Give her the benefit of the doubt and say like a solid sixty forty on the yeah. side of the park. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah, I did see a lot of cars over there on the way here. A lot of kids running around that park and all the all the different fields. Yeah. yeah. I think I could take them. <laughs> so, so I, I did wear a new shirt today. I don't know if you saw what it says. I try I, not to, try not to laugh. I try not to laugh at my own jokes, but we all know I'm hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could wear that because I definitely don't try not to laugh at my own jokes. Oh, I don't either. I just thought it was a funny shirt. It is. I was either this or Bob's Burgers today, so this one won. Because I do have a Bob's Burgers shirt that I haven't worn yet. Does that have Gene on it? Nope, Bob. Okay. I like I'd like to have um Louise on there. She's the best character. Yeah. With the pink ears and everything. Yeah, Louise and then Gene and then Bob. Yeah. Gene's really good. Him and his sounds on his keyboard. Yeah. Something I would have done when I was a kid. <laughs> I just didn't have the keyboard to do it. I made noises I I did things like that whenever I went to places that had keyboards as demos. So I <laughs> <laughs> I think every kid did that. Oh yeah. That's why we weren't allowed. But, like, when they came out with the Casio keyboard that you could actually put your voice on, I was all over it. Or make other sounds on it. It doesn't have to be your voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was watching YouTube yesterday. and They had a thing about The Simpsons, which a lot of people do this about The Simpsons. So they're talking about The Simpsons predictions. Yeah. And uh, this guy says something about predictions. He's like, it's like they're doing it on purpose. See, that, that that makes my argument that they're not predicting because the prediction is done on purpose. You don't accidentally predict something. Well, I mean, it, to, to I be mean, a real prediction. Yes and no. Like, you say, hey, this is going to happen in the future, but they're not saying, hey, this is going to happen in the future. They're entertaining. Yeah. So, technically, they are predicting on accident. But, um, but like, when I was on my way here and I was, like, and I was stopping at a gas station to get Dr. Pepper... And I thought to myself, watch, they're going to be out of Dr. Pepper. I wasn't predicting they were going to be out of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> it was just a feeling. It was a hopeful thought that you made come true. Well, unfortunately, they were out of Dr. Pepper, so I had to go someplace else. 
But one of the things that they did do that they had on there, there's a, uh, an episode where Homer's writing on a chalkboard. He's doing a mathematical formula. Yeah. A complex mathematical formula, which... And it, it ended up being like the... It ended up being very close to the, the mass of the Higgs bo- boson. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really close, like... Zero 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 point one. I, th- I thought it was missing like point one, zero, one step. It was like and there's a lot of zeros in front. It's a point and then a bunch of zeros and then a one six. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, but, but yeah. I thought the Simpsons one was just missing one step from the equation. And they were pretty close. Okay. Very very, very close. Yeah, and that's. I mean, I checked the math on and, on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sheldon. Um, yeah. But I feel like. Purposefully predicting as often as they do, if it is purposeful predicting, yeah. The fan, they're futurists. The fan theories of, uh, what's his name? What's the creator's name? Oh, Matt Groening. Yeah, Matt. Is, it's it's Groening. Yeah. Graining? I know it doesn't spell that way, but that's how he pronounces it. So Matt Groening said, <laughs> <laughs> um, "No, but there's a fan theory that Matt Groening is a time traveler." Yeah, and it's based off of the Simpsons, Futurama, and like all this other shit. You know, like how much of it has come to pass, and and like how eerily similar a lot of it is. They'd actually mentioned Trump as president more than once, but they yeah. had the one where he was riding an escalator down. Yeah, with they, Homer behind him, and then it was very similar to yeah. when he was riding an escalator down, but there was no Homer behind him in real life. I mean, you don't know what that guy's name was. There was nobody <laughs> behind him, unless it was Homer the Ghost. I mean, maybe. Yeah, it's always possible. Um, I read something that was a friend of mine in Vegas has been saying it for about 10 years, at least, of the first people that are going to live to be like 140, 150 have already been born. Yeah, yeah, we talked about this. I don't remember. No. Well, I mean, we didn't go into detail, but yeah, oh. we talked about it a little bit. Um, so I read something that says pretty much – Obviously, other than, like, accidental deaths or, like, complications, whatever, it should be close to, like, everybody under 50 has a decent possibility of living to around 140 years old. Wow. What do I do for the next fucking 108 years? <laughs> what do you do? What do you, watch, one, the person, first one to live to 140, he's going to live to 140. Then um, there's going to be an accident that kills him. So it's not going to be natural causes. Probably. I just made a prediction. <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> I didn't accidentally predict anything. So one of the reasons that my buddy was saying it for a long time is we're getting close to, we probably already have the science behind it, but it's not widespread and sure is going to take a while to be adopted of medicine right now. Like if I go get Tylenol, it's the same Tylenol I get, same Tylenol you get, same Tylenol Joe Blow gets. Like it doesn't fucking matter. All medicine is here you go. Here's medicine. And we're at a point soon where it'll it can be adapted to you. So like you go in and like your insurance card or whatever has like your your DNA information and then they the pharmacist or the doctor can adapt like this medicine will work the best for you and like mm-hmm. maybe instead of like oh it'll take five days for this inflammation to go down or whatever, it'll take like five hours because it's adapted to you. See, that's that's one of the things I've actually thought of that as a as a process as a possibility to be in the future. And I've also thought, you know, this is the thing that people have a problem with people checking genetics and doing like that and trying to figure these things out. And it's like, well, it can actually help you in the long run if you actually. Yeah. And I mean, like, to a point, I agree. Like that, but there's going to be a database of everything mm-hmm. in the future anyway. And don't hear that as, like, I'm fine with it and you don't have nothing to hide because they shouldn't keep it for nefarious purposes. Oh, of course not. But. But there's kind of a database already right now. You know the, the hey, let's go visit a police station in fucking, like, grade school? Mm-hmm. They kept all those fingerprints on file. See, I never visited one. I actually know what yeah, I did. They kept all those fingerprints on file at, like, 90, 99% of them. Yeah. So if if something happens in the future, oh yeah, I know who this is because they came when they were in fucking second grade. I'm pretty sure they uh they, they kept mine when they saw me come in. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going through the they, they took us to the evidence room and they had all the, like it was an evidence um museum and you just saw all these different um 
illegal things. Just was it a museum or was it just the evidence room? It was an evidence room, but like everything was like in cases so you could see it. It wasn't oh, like okay. just shelves with stuff with stickers on it saying this is for this case. No, they, they literally had got it. Like there was a little jar that was uh, full of weed. There was a little baggie. Um, it was labeled cocaine. <laughs> you know, I mean, another one said heroin, and it was all through there. And they had a bunch of other stuff too. Oh, like weapons and shit like that. That's cool. And I still remember seeing the little because it looked like a it looked like a sample cup you would use, like when you do a uh, urine sample. Yeah, but it was full of weed instead. I'm looking at thinking he's not going to pass. That's you know, <laughs> imagine that just on a table, like the whole bust pictures they do, and it's like a pipe, like ten dollars of weed, and maybe a bong, and like three rolling papers that haven't been rolled yet, and they're yeah. like, and they're just super proud of it, just standing next to it, and like this is the bust of the this is the bust <laughs> of the month. Like, yeah, we're real proud of you. And they have a thing like this time. Busted people with fifty dollars of weed on them. It was a it was a banner day. Yeah. That's, so Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's. But I thought the Simpsons had it best when they had their their visit to a police station, and they had like these mannequins, and one of them was he's got like a, a a baby doll in between bread, and she's about to put it in her mouth, and I was like, yeah, these people see they got high. They thought it was a good idea, and he's like, and see what they did. This one decided. It'd be a good idea to have a California cheeseburger. But not mentioning the fact that there's a baby in between the bread. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the most ridiculous part of, like, the anti-weed campaign was the commercials back in the day. I learned it from watching you. Not, so that one, like, the melt mm. into the couch and, like, the dog starts talking to you and... Like, all this other shit. I'm like, one, like, that'd be dope as shit to talk to my dog. I was just going to say, yeah, if my dog came up and started talking to me, that'd be a fucking good day. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, that, okay. Like, the melt in the couch, that feels like that's what happens, depending on what kind of weed you smoke. So, I mean, like, they're not wrong, but, like, it doesn't matter. But it all goes back what, to... What they'd show people going to school, and, of course, they wouldn't be walking like a normal person, and they wouldn't look normal, they'd be... Like you said, melting yeah. or something, yeah. Or like when I was going to school and they showed us the uh, after-school specials that they used to show. There was one that was about uh, drinking, multiple ones about doing drugs. And it always all these shows they always showed us, or documentaries they showed us, always showed us the person who's up on the top of a tall building saying, I can fly, I can fly. And then they jump off and they, you can't fly, so don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> that was the gist of it. You know what I've never done uh, after smoking weed? Jump off a building. Think I can fucking fly. Yeah. I just say, hey, this is, I, I was like, why don't they just stay on the first floor? Also, I learned from Hook, from Robin Williams and Hook, less is more. Well, yeah. <laughs> when he was trying to jump to fly. But I was like, um, raised my hand. I was like, well, why don't they just do the drugs on the first floor? Yeah. Don't, don't go upstairs. Don't go to the roof. Don't go to the roof. If yeah, you can fly, yeah. you can jump off the curb. Yeah. And you'll find out. You know, the, the gravity... <laughs> While it doesn't exist, we'll keep you from going. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't. So there's there's several myths, rumors, whatever you want to call them, old wives' tales. Yeah. Of like why weed was illegalized in the first place. Oh yeah, there's a whole lot of them. And um, some of it has to do with uh, the hemp has to do with Hearst because he had a logging thing. Yeah. So that's that's I think the the most popular or like most plausible. Yeah. Like, I, I very much believe that that would be why. Because, I mean, look at... You don't want to make paper out oil. of him. Look at big oil. Yeah. Like, big oil's controlled everything for so fucking long. Like, the only reason that electric's taken off this time is because Elon Musk was a fucking massive person already. Because yeah. look at all the people that made, like, the water engines and then disappeared after fucking they didn't want to sell the patent. Yeah. So, because hemp grows... Was it like twenty times faster than than trees? Oh, it grows so much faster. Like a hundred times. But and even if they didn't like cotton. even if they didn't like hemp, there's another option. It's called bamboo. It grows super fast too. Yeah, but, and you can make so much out of so bamboo. Like hemp, hemp encroached on the big cotton industry, yes. the big oil industry, because you can use hemp oil for fucking everything. Yeah, for clothes, for paper, for fuck, 
it was going to annihilate like five different industries. See, and Hearst Publishing had their own um, their own trees to turn into their magazines. Yeah, they didn't want to have to suddenly shift to you know. Yeah, but it would have made sense because you can grow it so much faster. Exactly, and you can make a lot more paper out of it. And it's it's so much easier of a harvesting process. Yeah, so like I said, bamboo's easier. the same way. But that's like clothes, shoes, rope, socks, oil, like diff everything. I saw this whole uh, documentary on uh, they were building a, a bridge in um, China. It was an arch bridge, a walking arch bridge, and they made this thing completely. Like out of bamboo, like the rope tying it together, the the thinness of this rope will blow your mind on how much it holds up. Like the regular rope that's, that we use. Bamboo's strong as shit. Yeah. So, I mean, that's another option, too. There's so many options yeah. other than trees, but they don't want you to yeah. get that. And the hemp, no, you know, it's also weed, so no. But but the stuff that they use to make papers and clothes and all that, that's not going to get you high. Yeah. Nobody's going to smoke that. Yeah, that's the, the one I had. The THC content in it is super, like so minuscule, it's ridiculous. Like and, and if you use like hemp hand lotion enough, it's great. If you use it enough, it has a possibility of showing up on a drug test. Well, um, I'm just saying it, it's it's like the stuff that I have. Yeah, it is great. It moisturizes my skin very well. I don't know about drug tests, but I've I've been using it for a long time, and it's it's good. I get it from the body shop. Nice. I also have some, uh, I just got recently, somebody at work gave me a, she made it herself, because she goats. Um, and it's lotion made out of goat's milk. Uh, I don't know where I thought that was going, but it also went somewhere that I didn't <laughs> think it was. They fucking make lotion out of dairy. I don't know, but she also makes goat cheese. So you also eat it? I'm trying you to. eat the lotion? No, no. But I, I'm trying to get her to get me some goat cheese. How can you not eat, if it's fucking goat milk? Well, it's mixed with other stuff. It's all natural, but no, I'm not eating it because I need it to moisturize my skin. Well, you can moisturize the inside of your mouth. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I want to – she, she told me she put some, like, garlic and different things with her goat milk and her goat cheese, and then uh, she can dip crackers. So I'm, I'm, I'm on 100% on board for that. I would be willing to try it. I had a, a very bad experience with goat cheese, so I guess there is one thing we talked about last week. Or maybe it was like two weeks ago of, is there anything that like you won't eat again because of something that happened? I have great experiences with goat cheese. Like I, when I go to Blaze Pizza, I always get goat cheese on my pizza. I think I was two. Uh -oh. We went to Mexico with my grandma's church yeah. to help build houses or do, I don't remember. I was two. I barely remember anything about it, but I remember how fucking awful these goat cheese burritos were. No, your, your, your taste changed from two until now, so well, you might want yeah. to give it another try. So, like, and I I was the one that got away with the most because I'm like, I don't, I don't want to eat this. And so my grandma ate it. So one day we'll have to go to Blaze Pizza and just get, get a little bit of goat cheese on one slice or just a little bit on half of it. I would consider it. And it's it's good. <laughs> it's it's different. It's it's a, definitely a strong flavor of cheese. Yeah. And I like it a lot. So, but yeah. Um, that was also the trip that my grandma was watching me. My parents were doing whatever. Yeah. And my parents come over and they're like, where's Jeremy? Oh, he's over there playing. Over where? There's, it's a, a small village that didn't have running water exactly. Yeah. So they had a, a latrine trough oh. of just like, okay, it goes that way. I was playing in that. That's not good. And my mom's like, "What do you, you said you were watching him? Yeah, he's just playing. Yeah, in a latrine. Yeah, that's yeah, you don't <laughs> want to do that. No. So that's probably why I have a uh, iron gut and great immune system. Yeah, that, that's a contributor. <laughs> <laughs> also, might explain some other things, but you know, I don't know. Yeah, that, that must have been a fun day. <laughs> I'm sure it was. <laughs> you don't know. Of course, you're having fun. Yeah, you're just playing. playing in the mud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If anybody else out there has stories about playing the latrine, you can go ahead and comment on our Twitter, <laughs> on our Facebook, <laughs> or YouTube. we'd like to hear them. YouTube, yeah. yeah. Yep. We'd like or, to. Or if you also don't like goat cheese, if you do like goat cheese, you can also comment. <laughs> you have good taste. You like goat cheese. Maybe some feta cheese too. It is really warm in this room this week. It is very warm in this room. Yeah, I am sweating. I'm trying not to think about it. Because I had basketball shorts on before, and I'm like, mm, 
No, it hasn't been it hasn't been wear shorts outside long enough season. And I'm not trying to blind the fucking camera. Yeah, I was gonna say you don't wanna you don't wanna blind anybody, you don't the cameraman over there. Yeah. He's a good cameraman. He always keeps quiet, doesn't make a noise, doesn't <laughs> fart, nothing. It's great. <laughs> He goes, cameraman who fart or burp or something, and you're like, "Fuck!" So, I sent this video in a group chat, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play the video again because I was trying to find like a list of what it included, and I could not find that list. So I don't know if you watched it, but I definitely want to talk about. Oh, it. I, I hadn't been in the group, so I hadn't seen it, I missed it. I think I saw that there was something there, but I didn't get a chance to watch it because right. I was in a place where it wasn't a good time for me to watch a video. So. The sequel trilogy had so much potential. The plans for episode 7, 8, and 9 went along the lines of this. Princess Leia would be attempting to rebuild the Republic, while Luke is attempting to rebuild the Jedi Order. The villains of this trilogy would be both Darth Maul, reigning as now ruler of the galaxy, while his apprentice, Darth Talon, would have a majority of the action focused around her. Anakin's grandkids would be the main characters, and Darth Talon would seduce Han Solo's son to the dark side. The trilogy would have ended with Leia becoming Supreme Chancellor of the New Republic, and Luke would have successfully rebuilt the Jedi Order. However, he would have died somewhere towards the end of the trilogy. Also, the Wills are extremely important in this trilogy, which were ancient beings that fed on the forest and controlled metachlorians. Now that you know all this information, would you rather see George Lucas' trilogy, or are you satisfied with what Disney gave us for the sequel? George Lucas. So, well, I will say this. I did like the the trilogy that came out after, but that one would probably have been um, that's what so I was much for. better. With, with how many of the books I read, that was what I was hoping for. With that would have been so much better. Similar yeah. with the new trilogy. But I, 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 I because that, that's not like happening, unfortunately. Han, Han Solo's kids, um, Luke's kid, and like the young Jedi, the young Jedi Knights, or like the, the Jedi Academy stories. Mm-hmm. They're all so dope. Mm-hmm. And, like, just how everything goes together, like Chewbacca's kid, and, like, there's fucking everything. There's so much. And they just threw all of it right in the fucking trash. Well, at the end of it, they showed, like, uh, they were on that planet where where all the arms dealers are at, which I thought was interesting because I'd actually thought, where where is where are the Rebels getting their equipment? I mean, you know, these little uh, X-Wings... They, they they don't they don't just walk around and find them. You can't yeah. just build them out of trees. Yeah. So I, I always wondered about that about you know who's feeding both sides their weapons. I mean the, the empire they've got a lot, but the thing is on that planet they show at one point that the kid is in the stables with those animals that they race, and he's kind of doing the thing where he bring the force to bring the to use the broom. So that made me think there was going to be something involving that in the third one. What movie was that in? That was the second of the second trilogy. I mean, the That's third. how much I've blocked those fucking movies out. I have no idea what you're talking he's about. He's in the stables, and he, he, he he's like he's watching them leave the planet and go to save the rebels, and he's all, oh, it's so great because we got the Jedi's back, and then he goes and uses his force power. Huh. And it made it think like, yeah, there's going to be all these new Jedi's coming out of this. And then the last movie comes out, and... They don't even touch on it ever again. It's like that kid did not exist. Maybe the yeah people on the gambling planet they they just offed him because they found out he had force. That's possible. And like some of the video games that they come out with. That's I really want to get Jedi Survivor. That yeah, looks dope as shit. And the one before that one is really good. I think I already got that one because it was like four dollars. But it, I mean, it's fun. I like yeah. it. I downloaded it for free with a. Uh, one of my subscriptions on it was either Xbox or PlayStation. It's available on both. Mike and his subscriptions. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Maybe, uh, that's another thing. If you make if you, sure have you to, subscribe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do. On YouTube. On I mean, YouTube. you can you can subscribe. It's not called subscribing though on Spotify, is it? Well, it's it, like follow or follow. Then Apple. there's also Stitcher. I don't fucking know what it's Apple, called. Apple, Amazon. Yeah, hit hit the button that says. Uh, let me know when stuff comes out. Yeah. That's that button. The notification button. Yeah. yeah Cause we're also on Amazon music. Yeah. 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 So you can tell uh, here, Alexa play some offense intended. I've done that just to try it out and it worked. <laughs> I've also had Google. Yeah, do but it. now if somebody's listening to it and fucking their Alexa's listening, it just pulled it up again. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> now, now they Xbox hear. turn off. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I uh, I was talking to my Fire TV, and I, I said that one day, and it started playing us. Yes. That's did you have nice. to say podcast at the end or no? I think I did, yeah. Okay. And I did definitely did on Google. I was in my car. Yeah. I hit that little microphone button on my uh, on my steering wheel, and it went right to it. Fancy. Yeah. So if you have a microphone button on your butt, a uh, uh, speak button on your on your uh, steering wheel, give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> he drives a VW. I don't. He probably wasn't going to try to plug that for free. No, no. VW pays. <laughs> I bought multiple ones. It wouldn't hurt you to. to I have two. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt you to, to you know pay us for it. Yeah. Um. I looked into their company in uh, Tennessee. They actually have some good things for their employees. Whether uh, they're making electric cars. And they're in Tennessee. Yeah. That's not a terrible place to live. No. Because no. <laughs> there's, uh, I think, the Rivians in Illinois, and. Holy shit. Like, I, con- I considered it for a little bit. Lucid's in Arizona. Uh, I looked up, like, just Googled gun laws in Illinois. Because yeah. I know Chicago. Oh, they're bad. That's, that's where Chicago is, so I know it's it's not going to be great. Yeah. It's a felony. If you have non-serialized ammo in a gun. Yeah, I don't want to go in there. In public. I don't want to go there. So, like, that potentially means you can carry... You have to have fucking cartridges, ammo, bullets, and it with doesn't work. fucking serial numbers on them. And it doesn't work. It doesn't help. Like, what it? What do you fucking do? Like, I get you can put serial numbers on everything, like fucking diamonds, socks. Yeah. Like, you could serial everything. It's not going to... No. Yeah, they're, so not, they're not solving murders as, because of serial numbers. As soon numbers. as I read that, I'm like, yeah, absolutely not. Guess what you can't see after a fucking round explodes or, like, just completely smashes but you, into a wall or whatever. If it's on the casing, you can see it on the casing. Okay. Well, if, what if, if you just leave it laying around. Yeah, that's what true. What if they clean up their brass? Yeah. There's... Clean your brass. <laughs> <laughs> they make these attachments for ARs that, like, brass sit collector. on the top rail. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's a brass collector. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. I, I am um, speaking of guns. I had something I was going to bring to show on the uh, podcast today, but there was a, a defective part in it. It's a model of a uh, gold AK. Yeah, it's like it's like gay big. No, it's like oh, is it gay big? Oh, yeah. All the other ones I've seen from them are like this fucking big. No, the one, like well, the ones on my backpack. Okay, like so that. for for people that aren't watching on YouTube, Mike gestured that it's about a foot and a half long. A little I, bit less than that, maybe. I, I gestured that it was like two inches long. And when you uh, when you pull the handle, it, it, it cycles. the The magazine comes out, and uh, it's got little bullets that do not fire. They do not fire, but they <laughs> um, but they are made out of brass. They're milled out of a, a solid piece of brass. Is it California legal? Uh, no. Uh, well, yes, actually, I think it only holds. I think it only holds three rounds, so I think we're okay. The fact that you had to think about it tells you a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot. They, they, I don't. They may have passed something since I left it at home. Since I drove over no, you're here. Not wrong. Well, not, I, not a wrong. new gun law this afternoon. Who knows? But yeah, it is cool though. I think I might go to California next weekend, or the weekend after. One of the weekends I'm going to Vegas. Yeah. And then I'm taking another week off, um, if they approve it. Oh, I haven't talked about that on here. So I've been a starting. Well, well, before issues. you get to that, when are you going to California, and how long? Um, I don't know to pick up a couple car parts. Well, I've told you that like uh, Santa Rosa ish. I've been I've driven to Santa Rosa, but um, I was telling you before when baseball season starts, we should go to uh, San Francisco and yeah. get the Giants game. I that's one I haven't I've been to that stadium, but I have not been in the stadium to see a game. I've seen some of a game from an airplane flying over it. That was fucking cool. That night, that was great. How close were you to the ground that you saw part of a game from an airplane? Well, I could see what was going on from the plane. I mean, I, oh, I look. There's lights. I mean, I couldn't look and go, <laughs> "Hey, Barry Bonds is up to bat." But no, I could see like the, the fans. I could see the field. I could see there was people in the outfield. People, you know, up to bat. The game okay. was going on. So you were fairly close to the ground. Yeah, I was just taking off. It was, oh, okay. See. I would have answered the whole question. I wasn't question. just flying over the city to go to another. I was taking yeah, off out of San Francisco. the whole question. Yeah. Well. <laughs> like if you were flying from L.A. to Oregon, 
They're like, oh, yep, there's the stadium. I can see their <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Um, but keep in mind, you see, I could have just said that, but this is a podcast, and we have to paint a picture. And we don't want to just have short answers that, that don't take much time because we're filling an hour here. Why say much <laughs> word when few words do trick? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. But I, I was trying to paint a picture. Yeah. Set uh, the mood. So I figured I'd make it a beach day. Because now that it's not fucking awful outside, and I haven't been to Cali in a while. A while? Yeah, a whole while. I can't remember when the last time I went on. It's been a long time. So I figured soon. I don't know if it's going to be a day trip or, like, I don't have any, If I go by myself, I don't have an issue sleeping in the car. I don't yeah. shit. Just park in a Walmart parking lot and sleep in the car. Who cares? Yeah. Oh, they allow that, too. Or Cracker Barrel. I didn't know they did. Yeah, yeah. They, um, there was a, there's some people that um, call the Howard Stern show a lot. Yeah, and they were homeless. And they were traveling from one state to another, and they stayed in uh, Cracker Barrel parking lots overnight. <laughs> yeah, they talked about it on there. Huh. It was uh, it was during the pandemic. Oh, so they were the only ones in the Cracker Barrel parking. No, lot. No, there was others too. <laughs> um, the Walmart over uh, one of the WalMarts in town uh, in Reno. There was um, there was a lot of. There was a few uh, RVs parked off to the end of the parking yeah. lot, and one of them had uh, painted on the door with spray paint said "Home." <laughs> that used to be a joke. Um, when I was growing up, we had a, a pull behind travel trailer, yeah, and we go camping all the time, whatever. And a couple of times, I think we were driving like a long distance to get to the campground we were going to. So like, yeah. every once in a while, we'd stay in a Walmart parking lot overnight. So it was a rolling joke with my family. It's like, anytime we had the trailer, like, oh, let's just go camp in the Walmart parking lot. Yeah. So it did it, I think, twice, probably. And anytime you go past, you always see an RV of some sort at the very back of a Walmart parking lot. I, I remember one time when um when I was growing up, we, we just, we didn't have a uh, camper, but um. We went out to a campground. We went and we did paddle boats and all that. It was sort of a camping trip, but instead of camping, my dad ended up taking us to a hotel and we stayed there and <laughs> after, at night. So we had an indoor pool and all that shit. Nice. And we went and had pizza. We didn't have to rough it and try to catch our dinner or anything like that. Damn. Oh, it was fun, though. Yeah, it's, I miss camping. It's nice when you're in a heated pool indoors That's... after being out in the sun all day. I think especially now that it's nicer too, like I'm going to do either a couple of hikes or like find a tent or some shit or whatever and go either like further Northern Nevada or like somewhere in Cali and just yeah. spend like two or three days just doing fucking nothing. Um, there's this place in California. It's really nice. It's called uh, Yosemite. That's a good place to go camp at. Did Nick Benba tell you that? No, I've been there a few times. A couple of times. A few fucking times. I've kid been lives there. <laughs> I've been there a few times. It's it's great. And uh, there's a place there. It's called May Lake. You walk up the mountain. It's a mile and a quarter up the mountain. And you uh, can get yourself a, a camping spot right next to the lake. Huh. Yeah, I camped there a couple times. One time, the first time I was out there, I I, uh, I just slept in a, um, a sleeping bag under the stars. I didn't use it. I tent. It was right outside. Yeah. I remember somebody at the time I worked with was like, oh, I wouldn't do that. I'd be afraid of the of the bears. I'm like, do you think a, a tent's going to yeah, stop a that's, bear? That's what I was just, just She's like, oh, say. well, I would, I'd just get on the car. I can't even fucking talk. She's like, I'd just go down to the car and sleep in the car then. Like, um, cars don't stop them either. And also, um, good luck. I mean, a good chance are you're going to be going to bed at night. Because if you're trying to sleep in your car during the day, it's going to be too hot because the sun's going to go through the window and you're gonna, you're not going to be able to do it. And when you get down, down that trail at night, even with a flashlight, you're not making it. Not to mention the fact that there's wild animals in between you and the parking lot. No. Yeah. I, uh, one of the things we were at, one of the, there was a demonstration. They were explaining the whole place to us, and they told us about mountain lions. And they told us, um, you may not see a mountain lion, but I assure you, you're being watched by one. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you're lucky if you actually see one in person, but. I mean, as long as it's not attacking you, but yeah, yeah. But they're very good at hiding. But they'll know where you are, but you won't know where they are at. And if you're walking at night by yourself with a flashlight, you're just that might be might as well be a welcome sign. 
So what you're saying is you needed to like cartoon it, like carry a fishing line, a fishing pole, and have the flashlight all the way up there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But that, also cats can see at night. Cats can see at night pretty good too. That way you, they think you're up there. But I think with the light you're just advertising. Come eat me. Yeah, but you're making it think that it's. Yeah, you're making your thing way ahead. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But even deer, you don't want to even. They won't eat you, but a deer comes running at you, you are fucked. Just karate chop in the throat. Yeah. Get to its throat <laughs> past its antlers. I'll, we were at. Um, if you get to its throat past its antlers, you can punch pretty hard, Mike. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> but as long as the antlers aren't in you when you're doing that, you're fine. But I was at um, a place called Grover Hot Springs. That's another place you should look into. That's a good place to go to. It's not far. Um, but they, at Grover Hot Springs, uh, we were walking through the field at night, and w- we hear a noise beside us, like three feet away. We all turn and look, and there was like a family of deer just walking along, walking through the f- same field as us, right beside us. Nice. Just like, looked at us, oh, how you doing? And just kept walking. It <laughs> <laughs> was really cool. And I turned on my headlamp, and I could look over, and they looked right at me. And They look at you like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> Kinda, <laughs> and it was a headlight. It was on my head. Exactly. I was uh, I was in, I was in Oregon, and a friend of mine and I were on a road trip. And we were driving through, and we see this field, this big open field, and there's these uh, elk, you know, with the the fuzzy antlers, yeah. which are cool. I was like, oh shit, stop! I need to take a picture. So he does, and I, I go to take my camera. I go to take a picture, and uh, it's like they knew. Because they, they turned and they looked like they were posing, like they wanted to get. <laughs> I mean, if they could have smiled. I, I thought you were going to say they started like charging the car. No, they, they stopped eating and all of them seriously turned and looked up at me. <laughs> like they were, like they wanted me to get their face in the picture. It was That's, so fucking cool. I also have a wildlife story in Oregon driving through to go to, I think it, it was either in like Northern California or Oregon because I was driving to go check a truck out like three years ago. Yeah. So I was driving my Audi all road and it was winter, like snow on the ground in most places still, but the roads were pretty fine. Yeah. And going like cruise control, like 50 and just looking around. Cause like it, it looks really fucking nice. Yeah. And I look out my driver's window and here's a fucking gray wolf. that's like stands about this fucking tall. That's running with my car. Running wow. 50 fucking miles an hour. Wow. I'm like... So you're not outrunning it if it's chasing you? No. And I'm like, that's... Okay. Mm-mm. So, you, and then you, I just started going 90. I'm like, that's... F- I am not fucking dealing with that. <laughs> do, you, do you want to let the audience that are not watching YouTube know how high you held your hand up? Oh, yeah. Hey, that's a good point. <laughs> so it was probably like... what? Did, I don't know how tall that is. It's probably about like three, three or four, or four feet. feet. Yeah. Yeah, like three or four feet tall. That's a big doggy. T- oh, yeah. You should have gone the out. The wolf and, was fucking huge. You should have gotten out and scratched its belly. Yeah, with a 1911. Because <laughs> <laughs> had it with me. Yeah. But, no, I'm like, I'm not trying to, like, I don't know where I'm at, and I don't know the fucking exact exacts. So there was less than 10 rounds, so it's legal in Cali. All right, nice. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not dealing with it. I didn't even wake my roommate up. He was in the passenger seat. I'm like, he's going to freak the fuck out and try to shoot it while we're driving. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that is illegal in every state. Yeah. Well, to a point. Yeah. If but, it's um, like self-defense or this or that, or like there's several caveats, exceptions. My uh, my 1911, if I put the right magazine in it, I'm okay in California because the one magazine has seven. The other one holds ten. See, that's why I think I should get me a uh, Desert Eagle because it only holds seven. So I'm fine. <laughs> It only holds seven, so it's a lot safer. A fifty cal Desert Eagle, seven rounds. I think, I think you and I have different definitions <laughs> of the word safer. Yeah, seven round Desert Eagle, fifty but, cal. And of course, I just carry more magazines. That is the California definition of safer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, bunch of fucking crayon eaters. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we know somebody who refers to um, Marines as crayon eaters. Well, they are. But I did not say that. I am in full support of all of our, our uh, services yeah. in the military. But Marines are special. I was watching, speaking of Marines, I was watching uh, 
I saw a small clip of uh, Rob Riggle talking about his his time in the Marines. Yeah, which he's he's funny. He's I love funny that shit. guy. But he was pow. talking about it. <laughs> Are you saying pal? <laughs> but he was talking about the Marines, and he was like, he's like, I'd never change. I wouldn't change a bit of it. Uh, any uh, of the twenty three years I was in it. He's like, it made me who I am today. Because if you want an easy life and you want air conditioning, go join the Air Force. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm just kidding. But I thought it was funny when he said it, so I laughed. Yeah, no, that's a lot of them call it the chair force. Yeah. But he is, I, I think he is so funny. Uh, Rob Riggle's fucking great. Oh, yeah. It doesn't mean he didn't need a couple crayons, Mike. Uh, oh. Maybe. That's, yeah. I mean, kids eat crayons. Not me. I didn't eat crayons as a kid. <laughs> I, I, you could, when I was a kid, you couldn't get me to eat vegetables. You think I'm going to eat a fucking crayon? Are you kidding me? I mean, it probably tastes better than vegetables when you're a kid. I also didn't eat paste. I don't I don't think I ate glue. I'll say I played with glue. I didn't eat it. Oh, yeah, I did the, like, did the hand. hand and Elmer's glue, basically, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah all I, the time. Oh, yeah, I loved it. I loved peeling it off. I'm fairly positive I never ate a crayon. I liked peeling the glue off, though. Yeah, it was so fucking great. Yeah. But, no, I never ate a crayon. I never did the paste, you know, where you... Wipe it on. Wipe it on. Well, that little stick, you put it, and it was literally paste, so like yeah. thick. And you put it on the pa- on the construction paper, and then put whatever you're pasting to the construction paper on, on top. Never used glue. No, I used it, but I never I ate you it. Said you never did the. No, swipe. I never ate it. I never ate the. Oh, the paste. Uh, I, other people did. Well, I'm sure. I might have eaten some soap when I was a kid. But... <laughs> uh, I did too, but it was because of saying bad words. Yeah, I was just about to say that. So, I think the first couple of times it was like, like brush your brush your teeth with soap, and it was like whatever fucking like hand soap was right there. So me and my brother were the. For me, uh, it was a bar of soap. Yeah. So, I think definitely it was only me and my brother. My sisters didn't ever have this issue. So it happened several several times, and then my brother's like, "I'm gonna make this stop." So. My mom's like, okay, and like, go get the bar of soap. He got the bar of soap, and he just started eating it. <laughs> Dude, that'll, that'll work. So oh. the next time it was, okay, well, <laughs> do it again. Of like, go wash your mouth out. So he went and got the Dawn and just started using it as mouthwash. <laughs> See, um, <laughs> uh, I had a neighbor, and I saw the mom literally put, she, she like, I, I think it was Dawn. It might have been Joy. I don't know which um dishwashing detergent but she basically poured it right in his mouth yeah and i'll tell you this it did not stop cussing from happening because after i saw it i went around the corner i was like holy shit (laughs) (laughs) i bet it didn't bring joy either no (laughs) no it did not yeah no i was like i'll take a bar over that any day it doesn't taste good it was also i was reading it's facebook different shit pops up of like oh this will kill you this will kill you or maybe it's just the algorithm to me. Um, oh. So, like, different dish soaps and whatnot have, like, they don't need everything that's in them. Like, yeah. they add blue dye to make it look fucking clean. Because for some reason, we as humans think that blue is clean. Yeah, blue's clean. Chlorine, blue, blue, blue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the ocean, even though that's not fucking clean. No, it's not clean. <laughs> so, like, it's it's got all this other shit that's just fucking awful. And... They're listing it off and like what it does and and like obviously larger amounts by itself because I mean like if you think about it like hydrogen is not great by itself for consumption no but you don't want to breathe it if you mix two hydrogens and an oxygen it's a fucking water <laughs> so I mean I don't know how how good any of these fucking videos are that are just like oh everything's gonna kill you but like I don't, I don't know why we have to put fucking coloring and everything. Once I told you about salt, if you take, you know, uh, Na and Cl and you put them together, you have salt. But if you take those things separately, you're dead. Uh. So <laughs> that's one of the cool things about science is, you know, it's, it's just amazing how what you can make out of it. Yeah, you can either die or not. The um, periodic table of elements, pretty great. Periodically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, so have you heard of my, Michael Franzese? Yeah. No. Well, he was a uh, capo in the uh, um, Colombo crime family for many, many years. 
Okay. And now he's got he's got books. He's got a YouTube channel. He talks about it. And he, one of the things he does is a uh, uh, Mafia Movie Monday, which is great. It's fucking awesome. I love listening to him talking about the movies because because some of the ones he talks about, like when he t- did his review of Goodfellas. That's what I thought you were going to talk about first. He um, he actually had met some of the people. He knew them. So he could actually tell you what the people were like and what the movie was wrong about and how they were like this. And, That's dope. And um, he was talking about, like, um, Paul, uh, the guy who uh, brought Henry Hill in. He's like, yeah, he wasn't like a father figure to him. It was, they, they, they played that up a little bit in the movie. And he's like, and he wasn't this nice guy that they show in the movie. He was like, he had a temper. I, it was fucking back in the day, like Italian mob guys. I'm pretty sure they all had fucking tempers. And he talked about Joe Pesci. And he's like, yeah. Guys like him, they never really made it. It wasn't just because of what he did to Billy Bats. It was because, like he said, guys like him, the, the ones that are high strung and crazy like that, and just killers, they, they don't they don't make it because people get concerned about what are they going to do next. Yeah, yeah. And then he was talking about Iceman. I don't know if you ever watched that movie. I wouldn't recommend it. No, I haven't seen it. But it's uh, it's about Richard Kuklitsky. It's very loosely based on Richard Kuklitsky. If you want to know about him, you go and watch the HBO specials they did, the Iceman Chronicles. Holy fuck. This dude is one of the worst people. Never even heard of any of that. Oh, my God. He is so <laughs> bad. Like, like when I, you hear him talk, it, it sends chills because he doesn't give a fuck. Like, like, he explained when he was 13 years old, somebody in his school was bullying him. He killed this kid at 13 cut off his fingertips and pulled out his teeth so they couldn't identify him. Jesus Christ. And then he's like, yeah, doesn't bother me. I didn't, didn't, didn't affect me at all. Wow. Yeah. And the, the, the whole thing is like that. And just a handful of evidence just yeah. tossed. <laughs> yeah, just gone. And he, he used to find, he liked to find different ways to kill people. He liked to use the cyanide. He liked to use because it was untraceable. He did all these different things. He claimed to be a... Uh, a hitman for the five families. Huh. But um, Michael Francis is like, uh, yeah, I was on the street working for 25 years. Never once did I hear of this guy. <laughs> He's like, he, yeah, he killed these people. He did all this, but it wasn't for the mob. He did it for fun. No, or he, I wouldn't doubt that, but probably like if I, if I keep doing this, so I can find out like who they don't like, like maybe I can get in good with them. Well, but he like, he said he was a contract killer. But Michael Franzese is like, no, that's not how it works. Yeah. You don't actually have a contract and you have somebody sign it and say, okay, yeah. we're going to pay you to kill us. They're like, no, we have these people. We have 90 people who work for us that if they want to be in good with us, we tell them to do it. They have to do it. Yeah. It's not, I'm going to pay you to do it. He's like, sometimes maybe they might go to another family and say, you know, listen, we'll do this for you if you uh, get rid of this for us. Yeah. But I'm like, well, and that, and that makes sense because I don't know if you know this or not about contract law. If there's anything illegal in the contract, it's, it's automatically void. null and void. Yeah. <laughs> but so, I, think, I think even if there was a contract, it wouldn't really be something you'd put on paper. It's no, just the words you'd use. Yeah, to, exactly. Like, but like if you want to be a made man, if you don't go and kill the person that they tell you to kill, then you're probably going to be the person getting killed. Yeah. So they're not going to pay you to do it because it's your job to do what they tell you to do. Yeah. So and you, then you start getting the vig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, as, as you improve that's how you can make your way up yeah yeah that's how it works but i just but he told he was like he's like some of the things he talked about doing like the police tried to corroborate it and they couldn't do it like yeah no, it, it makes sense there's a like, lot of there's a lot of people throughout that have done documentaries of like trying to claim shit and it's like there's like, no like, fucking possible chance he said i wouldn't kill guy. anybody for less than six figures and and friends he's is like no Nobody's paying you to do that. Definitely not fucking back then. No. Like fucking five grand. But he, but he also said it's he had, that. but like in the movie, they have him working with uh, Roy DeMeo, which is like, he's like number three on the list of five, top five um, brutal uh, hitmen. And he, he had nothing to do. Like nobody can corroborate that he ever even knew him or worked with him. Jesus Christ. But this guy, he would, uh, for sport, he would go kill homeless people and try different ways to do it, you know, try out new material on the homeless people. Wow. Yeah, it's a horrible person. 
and they made a fucking movie about him. And then they wanted to humanize him, make him seem like this okay guy, because he he would kill people, but he still had his family off to the side. <laughs> but apparently, even that was bullshit because he's not even he wasn't even a good family man. Like he he beat his wife regularly. Yeah, when he was put I don't in prison. Know this, but sociopathy kind of covers. Like but when they put him whole life and not just like. Oh, well, I know. But, that, but the, the movie tried to make him seem like he was okay when it came to his family. Jesus Christ. But like he, when he went into prison, he, he had a do resuscitate thing put on him. And his wife said, no, fuck that. He dies, you keep him dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. She really did. She, Holy she shit. overturned his, his resuscitate. She made it a do not. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So if that's going on, I'm, I'm doubting that he was a, the great family man that they tried to make him out to be yeah. in the movie. But the, the people who are in the movie, I mean, they, they're good actors, and they played well, but no, he's 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 a piece of shit. I wouldn't recommend seeing it and thinking, oh, well, he's still good with his family, but he killed all these people. So that makes it okay. Yeah. I mean, like, like Dexter, like, you can tell Dexter's, like, sociopathic across everything. Yeah. But he killed bad people. So yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Like, it's, I love it's Dexter. still a sociopath. But... And a mostly okay one. <laughs> yeah. It was entertaining to watch. But um have they brought it back yet? They're supposed they to? did. Yeah. That's okay. pretty good. But I uh it reminds me when I was working at uh, a Jersey Mike's, the knives we used to cut things up. One day I noticed I looked on the side of it, it was a Dexter brand knife. So I had to take <laughs> I had to set it on the counter and had to take a picture of that one. That's great. Yeah, that's pretty good. But yeah, uh, but yeah, he also does um a review of Donnie Brasco. Which, if you haven't watched Donnie Morosco. It sounds really familiar. He's got Johnny Depp, and he's an undercover officer. I had actually heard the story about this guy. He was undercover in the, in the mafia for so long. I think I've seen it, but it might have been so long ago. I oh, it's I such a good movie. Um, oh, Al Pacino's in it. Al Pacino's in it also. And he says this is one of the most accurate things I've ever seen. And uh, he says it's his um, Al Pacino's best role as a mafia guy. Nice. And that's, that's, you know. I'll definitely have to watch that. There's a movie out there called The Godfather that some people think he's really good as a mafia guy in, so, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, and it, there's other ones he does, too, that are really, I, I just like to review. And like I said, he's actually met these people. He can, he can be like, this is what this person's like. Yeah. Uh, that's that's cool, because I, I really enjoy, like, mob mob movies, TV shows, like yeah. all that. There's one called Lily Hammer. I've heard of it. I haven't it's, seen it. I keep meaning to watch that. It's pretty fucking good. But they were talking about making a uh, TV series about his life, Michael Friends, Friends Ace. Huh. I'd like to see that. I, I uh, just uh, added his book to my uh, Audible last night. Yes. And it turned out it even cost me a, t- a, a, to- a token, so I'm pretty happy about that. It's not a very long book, but I'll, I'll, I'll listen to it and enjoy it when I get done with the book I'm listening to now. <laughs> I still don't know how I feel about audiobooks. Like, I kind of like them, but I'd have to dedicate too much focus to I- that. I listened to uh, to a book on the way here. Not the whole thing, but... Oh, okay. I was going to ask. <laughs> I, I wasn't driving from that far away. And, uh, I, yeah, I listened to... Uh, you know about it. It's uh, Expeditionary Force. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on book seven. Is that the last one? I don't... No, there's like 16. Oh. I recommend uh, people listen to that. Um, the AI in it is an asshole, but it's so fucking funny. His name is Skippy. Skippy? Yeah. The, uh, one of the neighbors in Vegas used to have a cat named Skippy, and they were both, like, semi, like, dementia-ish. Yeah. And, like, every once in a while they'd take the cat out for a walk, like, no leash, but the cat would follow them around the neighborhood. Oh, that's cool. just go out for a walk. And every once in a while, they're, because the cat's an inside-outside cat, like, just come and go as it pleases, mm-hmm. where's the cat? And they'd go around, where's Skippy? Have you seen Skippy? <laughs> like, no. I'm like, what's a fucking Skippy? The first time, I'm like, I don't, like the peanut butter? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> They're like, no, my cat. I'm like, no, I haven't seen your cat. I thought you were going to say they'd be out walking the cat and they'd be like, turn around and see the cat behind them. Oh my God, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that. Like there was a couple of times that like, uh, the lady was, I think a waitress at Olive Garden or noble profession. 
I worked at Olive Garden. Or Outback. It might have been Outback. I worked at Outback, too. Um, but I was up front. But, like, she would have a couple episodes, like, outside the house, like, in the street of, like, asking, like, oh, do you want this? And, like, carrying a tray around, an imaginary tray. Like, Ooh. Like, her husband calls the ambulance, and they come, like, check her out and do whatever. Like, Jesus, there's something going on. That's when you say, um, excuse me, I need new breadsticks, those are steak. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the guy that gave me the nineteen eleven for working on his car. So nice. that's he gave me. He gave me probably wanted to get that away from the person with the invisible tray. Well, no, because he he still had a lot. He's like, he's like, I'll let you pick which nineteen eleven you want. And I'm looking at him, and I'm like, I'll take that one. He's like, no, that's a Wilson Combat. You can't have that one. Like not knowing anything about nineteen elevens, I pointed <laughs> out the forty five hundred dollar nineteen eleven. That's a good choice. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna pick one out. At least you picked out a good one to yeah. check out. So, I mean, I still got a really nice one. And he said it has slide work and trigger work under it. Like, it's really fucking nice. I thought you were going to say, he's like, good choice. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no. I'm like, all right. Well, then I guess you need to pick. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I like my 1911. <coughs> I like my Glock, too. I used to like my Glock. It got stolen. And it wasn't me. I bought mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was back in 2013. Mine's a Gen 5. I'm guessing yours was in a Gen 5. No, it was a Gen 4. Like, the Gen 5 didn't come out until 2017. Yeah. That's nice, though. I was watching a video about, they were talking about the different generations and the change. And one thing I like about the Glock is just how good it feels in your hand when you fire it. That's, if anybody sees a Glock 17 Gen 4, the serial number is SGU971. That's mine. Give it back. Yeah, give it back. I think it's 971. It's either 971 or 961. Well, now we won't ever fucking get it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get two of them sent to you one day. That's, okay. They have Metro. They, they never fucking called nothing, ever. Like, I have a couple buddies that have that have had their guns, like, and taken as evidence or whatever in Metro and Vegas, and they will not tell you when they're done with it. You have to call every, like, month or two yeah. to check if you can fucking get it back because after they're done with it, once X time expires, they can just fucking melt it. Yeah. That's a waste. Yeah. There's fucking a lawsuit waiting to happen. But I do like, I like the 17 more than the 19. Before I bought my first one, I, I had had them both, held them both in my hand. Yeah. The 19 just felt so small. Like my hand went down to the bottom of the. Yeah, that's, I got big fucking hands. That's why I got a 17. But I, I got, I ended up getting the 19X. So it's got the. Is that the compact? No, it's not compact. It's got a, it's got the um, the grip itself is from a 17, but the slide is a 19. Huh. So, like, if you have to draw it, it comes out faster, and it's just it's really comfortable in the hand. Comes out faster? Does that mean it's like a <laughs> fucking inch and a half shorter than the yeah. 17? Yeah. I don't. I'm not. That, I, that's just one of the things people talked about. I I, okay. I didn't buy it for that's that the purpose. The same thing is like it's not forty gonna, and forty five stopping power. It's not going to be. It's not going to be hit, like a quick draw thing. You get hit with a fucking bullet. You're getting hit with a fucking bullet. Yeah. Stopping power. Well, I mean, it's just a nine millimeter is going to be faster, so it's going to be more penetrating. Where the forty five is noticeably slower, and it, but it's going to punch. And I mean. If you get either way, hit you're with getting, a bullet, either way, you're it's not hit good, with it's a bullet. Either way, it's not a good day. Not a good argument. No. That's even a even a twenty two long rifle is gonna hurt you. Yeah, like if anything, twenty twos can be do more damage because they don't go through bones a lot, yeah. so it can just play pinball inside you. Yeah, that's one of the things that people always say about. Yeah. And yeah, they put it in the head and it bounces around, but I've seen some videos that show something different. I mean, I'm sure it depends on the round, too. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, gr uh you know, Grand <laughs> Thumb, gr Grand Thumb, uh, he, he does, uh, he did a video on how, how, um. Did you say Grand Thumb? No, I said Grand. Oh, okay. But he, uh, he did a video on where he had one of those, uh, ballistic skulls shot at with a twenty two, And when it went in the eye, yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's not much. There's not much stopping it from going into your brain after your eye. Not at all. Yeah, but it was a good video. He, he has good videos in general. I recommend it. I don't think I've seen any of his. I also recommend uh, Kentucky Ballistics and uh, Demolition Ranch. 
I okay. also recommend everybody go out and uh, get yourself some shoes for NBA playoffs because you need some shoes for the Celtics. What Cheer them on. Go get shoes for the NBA playoffs. Are they going <laughs> to play in them? <laughs> <laughs> like mine. <laughs> uh, you got to support your team. Let's show them the bottom of your shoe. <laughs> So, I don't know if the color came across right. That's uh, green, white, and black. Boston Celtics. They looked a little blue on the Yeah, on it's the not TV. blue. They're, they're, they're green. So, they're yeah. Boston Celtics playoff shoes. So, when they put me in the game, I'm ready. And those are the those are the ones you designed? They're the ones I designed, yeah. The Air Force One. Yeah, so, can't get them. Sorry. Yeah. One of one. Uh, Michael, sell them to you, though. Slightly used. <laughs> thousand dollars i get 30 percent slightly used <laughs> gently used um only warm to church on sundays <laughs> <laughs> actually today's the very first time i've worn them and it's not a sunday and it's not a sunday and i'm not at church yeah, i was gonna say this isn't church. <laughs> um all right well we're over an hour we're recently all over the place but yeah good I hope you all enjoyed it. Like, subscribe. Uh, share. share. <laughs> <laughs> Not the singer. Yes. Um, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Some Offense Intended. Uh, Twitter, Some Offense Pod. YouTube at Some Offense Intended. Or just fucking search it. It's easier. Yeah. I really wish they would change how they did that. But listen, um, you said not the singer. But if the singer share wants to share our uh, podcast... Go ahead. She's got a lot of followers. She's still alive? She's still alive. Oh, wow. And she's got a lot of followers, so I'm go ahead. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we'll see you next time. Goodbye.